my title today is Trust in the Lord. It sounds like, like a simple thing to do, but how often d do we not trust in the Lord? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you today that you are trustworthy, that we can depend on you, that in, in our trials and temptations, we can come to you knowing that you will be there with the answer. I pray, pray today that as, as I give the message today, souls will be touched, and they'll be blessed and encouraged, and they will li leave here with a newfound trust that they can trust in the Lord. Amen. Well, that first scripture that they read, can you see me, me with my sitting here? Should I move to the side? Okay. You see all these pages? All right. They don't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tease you so you get guys sit there through all of it. Uh, when I was in college, uh, my grandmother was sick, and I had gone home uh, on a particular weekend, and I was so busy, I didn't stop to visit her. And on mo Monday evening, I got a phone call. Your grandmother passed. I was so sad. I was... I was shook up, but the lady that told me about, about my grandmother said, honey, I don't have words for you, but this will help. And sh she uh, uh, recited a, a pro Proverbs a 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with, with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And you know, that scripture has t stuck with me. Uh, that was many, many years ago. But that script scripture has brought me through a whole lot of things. Because things c come to us that we don't understand. But if we trust the in the Lord, we know that, th that there's a, a, an answer. Now, let us first go to the de definition of the word trust. Ac according to the 21st centu century Google Online, <laughs> it, it is defined a, as a firm belief in, in the, the reali re re reality, re reliability, truth, and ability of someone or, or someone else. It's a firm belief in somebody or something. If you trust someone, you bel believe that they are honest and sincere and will not deliberately do anything to harm you. Now, I know in my life there, there are people that I trust. I know that, uh, that I can go uh, to uh, David Shank and uh, I can tell him anything or ask him for help. And if he says he's going to do it, I don't wor worry about it because I trust him. I know that he is faithful because we've been fr fr friends for several years and he's never let me down. So I know I can trust him. If, if you trust someone to do something, you believe they will do it. If you trust someone with something I important or valuable, you allow them to look after it or deal with it. If you trust someone's judgment or advice, you believe that it, it is good and right. Now, I talk to Savannah sometimes, and sometimes I don't, we don't always agree. But I know 
that that her, her judgment and her 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 uh, her I'm looking for a word her advice is good because I know know it's founded on the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we, we've talked about the what the world has to has to say about uh, uh, trust. Let us let's let's see examples in the Bible, in the word, how how the people trusted in the Lord. Our first scripture is going to be Pro Proverbs three. Well, we'll, we'll do where he did that one. Go to uh, Philippians four four nineteen. Philippians 4:19 But my God shall supply all my all, all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Did you hear me slip? Cuz I've made that per that scripture personal cuz I say but my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory in by Christ Jesus. We got to claim these scriptures, scriptures, and 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 and, and, and walk with them. Second Corinthians four eight, eight and nine. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Can I see nine? Oh, there was in there. Okay. Sometimes we're tr troubled on every hand. Most of you know, uh, several months ago, I had surgery on both of my hands. And that was a perplexing time for me because I didn't know if I would be able to play the piano again. But you know what? I had something that, that the world didn't have. I had trust, know, knowing that God who gave me this gift w would not allow Satan to take it, take it away. And I trusted in him. Second Corinthians uh, five seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now that's a hard one sometimes. I re remember uh, when I uh, I was in uh, back in Kentucky. Uh, uh, a, a pastor friend. Uh, well, I didn't really know it. Well, it was a student's father asked me to come and, and be their uh, music direct director in uh, Missouri. Well, I had an old beat-up car, <laughs> and I thought, how am I going to get to Missouri? But you know what? I prayed over that car. I packed my belong belongings and said, it, it's me and you, Jesus. Because I, I if on my in, in my flesh, I would have said, "This car ain't gonna make it." But I pray it, almost every mile <laughs> that God would get us there, and I tr trusted Him to be to be faithful to His word, and He did. <laughs> Romans eight thirty one. What shall we say then to these things? If, if God is for us, who can be against us? You know, we go, go through life and we sometimes have enemies. We, are, we have, have people that uh, rub, rub us the wrong way. But what we have to, to know, if God be for us, who can be against us? They will, we will triumph in the end. But they will not win. You might have been bullied, but it, do, it doesn't matter. 
we, we're going to be, be uh, 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 victorious in the end. First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That's another scripture that you can walk with, yep. that, you, that you can uh, know that, uh, that God's going to be with you. Cap, casting all your care upon him. You know, a lot of us like to sit down and just worry. I don't know what I'm going to do. You have these children, children, and you say, my child is just driving me nuts. But, but if you cast your care upon the Lord, for he careth for, for you, he will take care of that child. Isaiah 26 and 3. Thou wilt keep him in per perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Mm -hmm. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Because, you know, like I said, we go, we go through life and we just get, get frazzled. We get worried, we get tempted, uh, and all these things, and we're not in, p and not in peace. We're in turmoil, turmoil. But if you take it to God, uh, he will keep you in perfect peace. Amen. You may not know the end from the beginning, but he will keep you in, per in, per in, in perfect peace. Whose mind has stayed on thee. Put your mind on the Lord and not the problems that you're going through. Ask, ask, ask God to help you, to strengthen you, and he will do it. He will bless you. Isaiah 40, 28, and then 31. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that, that the everlasting God, the, the Lord, the the, cre uh, the creator to the ends of the earth fainteth not, neither is we weary. The, there, there is no searching of his understanding. Understand it. In verse 31, But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They sh shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That, that's another one of the, those scriptures that will carry you through. But the, the they that wait on the Lord, you know, sometimes uh, in, the, in this world of instant, instant every, everything, we got instant tea, instant coffee, instant, instant everything, you go to the uh, to the to the uh, 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 McDonald's. It's instant. It's right here. We want everything right what right away. We haven't learned how to wait. My mother used to tell us when we were little, we would ask for something, and we wanted it right now. And she'd say, "We'll wait." And we were eager. We wanted it, and we'd ask again. She'd say. Didn't I tell you to wait? And we had to wait till she w was ready to do wha whatever it was that, that we re had requested. They that wait on, on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Isn't that something? We can walk and not faint. Teach us, Lord, I made this on the, on the end, how to pray, how to trust God, how to, how to, how to let him uh, lead, our, lead our lives. We've read script, scriptures where people have trusted in the Lord now, have Lord, uh, trusted in the Lord, and now I want to ask you, 
if you truly, truly trust in the Lord? Do you genuinely trust in, in the Lord? When trouble comes, do you throw up your hands and say, Oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Or do you kneel, kneel silently and ask the Lord to help you? When I was working, some t sometimes my check paycheck didn't couldn't come on the day it was supposed to, and I already had it spent. And I, I would, I would uh, be worried. But th then I would say, no, I will uh, trust in the Lord. It, it, will, it will come in due time. And God never fails if you wait on him. But most importantly, I want to know if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because if you, if you don't know who the Lord is, how can he help you? How, how, can, how, can, uh, how, how can you turn to him if, if you don't know who he is? And more importantly, if he don't know who you are. I, I, used, I used to watch All in the Family. And when Edith Bunker would, would pray, she would say, Edith Bunker here, and, and she would pray. She would pray. She, uh, she always told him who she was because she wanted him to know it was her. And you know what? If you, if you ha haven't accepted Jesus, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's not too late. It's never too late. All you have to do yeah. is believe that Jesus died and rose again for your sins. Let me say that, that again. That Jesus died and rose again for your sins. For your sins. But you don't have to, but, but there's more to it. You can't just know it. You've, you've, get, you've got, got to uh, ask him to come into your heart. Give your life to, to him and ask him to be your Lord and to be, be your Savior and to w walk in his ways, to begin uh, uh, to study his word be in a good church and, and learn uh, about, about, about this wonderful God that we have that we can trust in. I'm going to ask Pastor Reiner if, if he'll come because who knows that there may be somebody here today who, who want, wants to accept the Lord as their Savior. I don't believe that, that there should, should be in, any service we don't give people an opportunity to accept Jesus. You know, a lot of, lot of time we have a service, and the service is really good, and we don't invite them. And the Holy Spirit is moving. And so I don't want to be guilty of not giving you that opportunity. So Pastor Reiner... You're welcome. And we do serve an awesome God. Amen. And he calls to us continuously. We're his children. Whether we follow him, whether we don't follow him. We're his children called by his name. And the good news is he called us before we even existed. He called us to himself. He says, come on to me, all you that labor and heavy laden. Come on to me, and I'll give you rest. Amen. Come. Yes. This morning, is anyone here who has known Jesus, who has not, at this point, accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Yes. 